you come down to my local park to carry out an exercise to value a tree using the Cavat valuation method and we're going to use this tree over here, that oak tree in the middle of the field there. Now for this exercise we could be doing it for two potential reasons. It could be that we're looking at just putting a value on the trees in our local space so we have a better idea uh, of what the real value of those trees are to the community or it could be that this site may be being looked at for redevelopment and we want to consider how we can best persuade people to retain trees or, and so by showing the real value of those and this is one of those methods that we use within local authorities but also groups can use as well to, to put that value on their tree to give, give strength to their sort of argument or their decisions around what we're doing in terms of tree management. Right, okay, so we've, we've come out, we're going to look at our spreadsheet here. We've got our uh, boxes that we need to collect data for here. First box we've got on this is to measure the trunk diameter, so that's the DBH of the tree. So we're going to do that now. I've got my uh, DBH tape here, so we're going to mark out and see what the diameter is. Right, so we've, we've gone around the tree there, we've got this on our diameter uh, in centimetres and if we look at where the zero mark is and above it, we've got, it's about 127 and a half. So we'll just round that down to 127 centimetres DBH. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do then is going to mark that in the box. There, so we're going to go one, two, seven. And that's our first figure that we're putting in the box there. The CTI factor, that's our population density. We've already set that to say for Birmingham, that's 125% of, uh, of the total uh, value. The next thing then is to consider its location value. Okay, so the next thing then to look at is the location factor for the tree. Uh, and for this, the spreadsheet always starts with 100%, and that's giving a tree that is uh, very visible from the uh, from a public area, has lots of people viewing it. And if we look at the location of this tree here, it's in a nice piece of open parkland. It's got housing estate next to it, so we can see it's very very visible from all around. And there's lots of people use this space. It's part of a sports playing field at the moment. So we would give this tree 100% value on that. If the tree was less visible, if it was obscured by houses, for example, or some other building, we might reduce that down uh, to maybe 75%, down through maybe to 25%. So there's a graded value on there that we can decrease that, that we can decrease that by and as the, the value of that decreases that will decrease the, the total value of the tree. Right now we've done the location value the next thing to look at then is the uh, functional uh, functional crown values. We've got two stages on there one of those is looking at how much of the canopy is there compared with how much how the tree would be if it had been left to grow naturally and the second one is step two is about the quality of that growth on the tree so we're going to look at both of those at the moment so both would be starting at 100 percent and being reduced for any factors that we might see along the way so when we were looking at the crown from outside uh, we could see that it looked like it got quite a good full canopy but as soon as you start to walk underneath it you can see that there has been some damage here occurring so the crown is not actually a hundred percent that it would be had it not had this damage so we've got a branch that's been taken off there that's been ripped out we've got an old pruning wound there and we've also got some other pruning wounds further up so we know some of the canopy has been lost over time but on the whole it's a fairly good intact canopy so we may say that this is probably maybe 75-80% of what it originally was. 
Okay, so I'm going to add in the first part of the functional crown value. We can click on the box there. Got a little drop down menu. And we can see we've got factors here ranging from 100% down to 10%. So we said this is probably somewhere between 70 and 80% of the original canopy volume. So we're going to pick 80% there. And we've done that. The next one then will be to look at the crown value part two. So we're going to look at the quality of the crown and the growth that's there. Right, so let's look at the crown uh, values on here so looking at the canopy of this tree it's quite good nice dense canopy leaf color is looking good so there's no sparseness the leaves are all nice and dense on the ends of these twigs we can see here the good growth there we can't see there's any pests or diseases on this tree all the leaves are intact so I think on this basis we would say that the canopy is functioning at 100% on that. Right, so looking on the spreadsheet, we can see that the functional crown value part is already set to 100%, but should there be any factors that we would need to de devalue it by, we can do that. So we could take off 10% for each factor that might be um, causing it to be uh, not as functional as it could be. So if it was got a sparse canopy, we might, you know, maybe sort of 10% sparseness or 20% sparseness, we could reduce that down. Or if there were significant pests and diseases that had been affecting it, then again, we could mark that down there. But we'll leave it on the 100% for now. Okay, so we're just looking at our table here. Uh, you can see we've already got our other scores in. We're almost to the end. So we're looking at the positive attributes of this tree. The tree is a, an oak tree, it's a good size, it provides some connectivity for wildlife from one side of the park to the other. So I'm going to just give that a plus 10 because that's one good uh, attribute there. It's in a good setting, um, but we don't have a conservation area here. Um, on negative aspects though, I'm not going to score anything on this occasion uh, because I think again the tree is in a good location. It's right for its species and its size and it's providing good value there so i can't see any sort of negative attributes there the final step for us to do though is to look at the life expectancy and here again we have a drop down box and we have to consider the what the potential safe remaining life of the tree is given its location so we have less than five years five to ten right the way through to greater than 80 years so greater than 80 years would keep the, the value that we've been accumulating as a, as a total value or the, or the full value and we get depreciated on the decreasing amount of time that it can be retained. So this tree is in a good open location. It has had some damage. I do know that there is a little bit of fungi on it occasionally but that's nothing that we need to be concerned about. So we're going to say that potentially this tree is going to be at least sort of 40 to 80 years because I think realistically where it is it gets a lot of compaction around here but you know we'll see so so we're going to look over to our calculated values now so the first value that we come at based on the 127 centimeter diameter gives us a value of 205,976 pounds it's operated because we have 125 percent uh, CTI value so that takes it to 157,000 we've retained that at the location value, the first location value. But then we have depreciated that so slightly because we've said that there was, um, the crown wasn't as full as it could have been. We've again retained that under the functional part because we had 100% there. So we're still at 205,976 pounds. And then we've given it a plus 10 here. So we've increased that value slightly again up to 226,000 and then the last one which was the life expectancy factor this tree may well exceed another 80 years but for this example we just say the 40 to 80 years so that's reduced that value slightly and we can see we've come out with the final value for this tree of 215,246 pounds 
Now we've looked at a large tree using the CAVAT process but it doesn't just apply to big trees, it also applies to much smaller trees too. Obviously the value is decreased but it's interesting to get the values of those as well because even a newly planted tree will have an increased value once it's been put into a public location. We can have a look at working through the calculations for a smaller tree such as this small leaf lime that's here. We'll just have a quick look at this and we'll work through on the, uh, on the spreadsheet on the, on the screen so I'll show you the calculations in a moment. But we've looked at the tree, it's in a good location, we've already got our CTI value. The DBH of this tree I've already measured is 13 centimetres. The structural, structural canopy of the tree is 100%. We've had, had no work done to it at all. And the quality of the foliage on that is also 100% as well. No pests or diseases showing on, on that tree, or at least not anything of any concern. When we consider the amenity value, it's in a good location. For this example, we won't put any pluses or negatives on it, but it's a good quality tree. But the life expectancy on this is going to be quite significant. So it's definitely going to be over 80 years. So we'll work through that example now and just to see what value we get for this tree compared with the oak tree that was that we did it previously. Okay, so we've got our spreadsheet table here and I've already put in the values that we've picked up for the lime tree there. So we measured the trunk, it was 13 centimetres dbh, the unit value stays the same and that's given us a starting value of £2,158.23. We look through the other values there, the CTI value, you would adjust that for the location you're in, but we're saying that for Birmingham this would be 125%. The location factor, good location in this instance, so we've retained that at 100%. The structural value of the crown, it's still a young tree and it's got 100% of its crown still intact, so we've left that at 100%. The functional crown value, we said there were no pests and diseases there, there was no sparseness of the foliage, so again retain that at 100%. For this example, we said we wouldn't put any positives or negatives on it because that, you know, we don't we don't need to work that out at the moment. But the life expectancy factor on this one is greater than 80 years. It's a young tree; it's still got the rest of its life ahead of it. So definitely, as long as nothing else happens to it, it's got more than 80 years. So, like I say, we started with the the value of 2,158 pounds 23, and down across there, taking into account all the positives that it has and its life expectancy, we've ended up with a value of £2,698.